Hello everyone! Welcome back to another day of Vlogmas. And if it's not Vlogmas when you're watching this, then welcome. Okay, so you guys sent in a bunch of questions on our Instagram. Instagram handle is at Coffee and Bible Time. And you asked so many questions about the wedding day. I said, give me your questions on any questions you have about the wedding day and about being newly married. So this is a newly married and a wedding q and A. I I honestly got so many questions. I couldn't pick all of them out, but there were so many great questions that if you want a part two, comment down below. And if you guys really want a part two, I will for sure make a part two for you. But let's just get right into the questions because I know that's totally what you guys want. Come here. Someone wants to say hello. Come here. Hi. Say hi. Say hi. Is he gonna, is he gonna pause the video 50 million times? He's still a kitten, so it's kind of crazy. Okay. Just, just ignore him as much as you can. Okay. What do you know about God now that you didn't know before getting married? We're just jumping right in. What do you know about God now that you didn't know before being married? I thought this was a good question. And my honest answer is nothing has changed about what I know about God. God is still the same to me. God is faithful. God is good. God is all powerful. God is all knowing. God is in control of everything. God is sovereign. Nothing about what I know about God has changed. He is still my God. He is still my King. And that I am so thankful for because he is always constant in my life. When my life is crazy, when my life is changing, when everything is different, God is still the same. And God is still the same to me. He is still my rock. Now, what I have noticed about what I didn't know before getting married to what I know now is my own heart and how my own heart, there's issues in my own heart that I need to be working through and how there's ways that I can become more like Christ and how there's so many things within me that I've had to surrender back to the Lord and say, God, I need you to change my heart in this area. You're the same. I notice things within me that are different and that need to change. God never changes, we change to become more like Christ. So that's my answer for that. How do you both save yourself from marriage and overcome any temptations? Another one, what advice do you have for waiting for marriage and tips for couples avoiding temptation? So we got a lot of questions like this, like a ton about how did you wait for marriage? How did you um, save sex for marriage. How did we do it? We set a goal at the beginning. We knew in our hearts this is what we wanted. We wanted to save sex for marriage because we believe that that is a sacred thing that God created as a gift for marriage. He designed it to be within marriage and the best it can be within marriage. That's what me and Johnny both believe. And so since we already knew that at the very beginning, Neo, stop. No, I'm filming a video. Anyways, since we both knew that that's what we wanted to do, we made sure that throughout our dating time and our engagement time that we always came back to that. We set boundaries. We said, hey, these are our boundaries. And then every week we would talk about our boundaries because we noticed that it was a topic that you didn't just bring up at the beginning of a relationship and then never talk about it again. You talk about it constantly. Hey, these were our boundaries. What's going on? Are we overstepping our boundaries? If we are, let's get accountability partners. Me and Johnny got accountability partners. I had a close friend and he had a close friend that would check in on us and say, how are you doing with your boundaries? If you're struggling with your boundaries, get an accountability partner. Bring someone else in and say, this is what's happening. We're struggling. We need help. That is completely normal. If you're about to marry this person and you are you have a fiery passion to wanna to be with them, that is normal, that is not wrong. But if you wanna save yourself for marriage, if that is your goal, you need to set boundaries, you need to be talking about it constantly, you need to be praying about it, you need to be seeking the Lord. There are so many moments where me and Johnny were like, we need the Lord, we need help, we need to pray, we need to stop and we need to reevaluate our boundaries. So. That's what I'm saying. Next question. 
Do you wish you could change anything about the wedding day? That's a great question. Do you hear the cat? Neo. He's going nuts right now. Should I? I might. I'm sorry, but I might like lock him out because I don't want him to distract you. Sweetheart, come here. Oh, yeah, I know. Okay, so back to the questions. Do you wish you could change anything about the wedding day? So when I look back, there are things about the day that obviously did not go perfectly and did not go as I planned. I probably would not have had as many people stay at my house as I did. Our house was filled with people, which I loved. I loved being around so many family and friends. Don't get me wrong, I loved that. But it was really chaotic and hectic the morning of the wedding. And I kind of wished that would maybe had been a little bit more peaceful and relaxing and just like, I felt really stressed during the morning time. Um, so I kind of wish I would have changed that. Another thing I wish I would have changed, and I could be wrong on this, I don't know. And I'd go back and forth, but I kind of wish I wore my hair down. I originally wanted to wear my hair down, and then I changed last minute to wearing it up. And I just think I like the way I look better with my hair down, but... It was kind of like one of those things where I'm like, this is my only moment where I can wear an updo. So I don't know if I would have worn it down if I would have been like, oh, I wish I would have worn it up. So I don't know. I mean, I love how everything turned out, but I'm just being honest that there are a few things that I'm like, oh, maybe I could have changed that. But I'm like really trying to think, is there anything else? The day was so magical and beautiful that, yeah. I don't, I don't think I would have changed anything else. I'm just content with what God gave me. And it was such a beautiful day. Next question. Did you all have a budget for your wedding? Was debt an option? Debt was definitely not an option for us. Like that, I think I would have had a wedding at my church with everyone be, bringing potluck food and um, just have it very simple if, if I didn't want to go into debt. Like, I would have done as much as I can to make sure we didn't go into debt. But what ended up happening was our parents helped us pay for it. So that helped us pay for a beautiful wedding. If my parents would have not been able to help, which I'm so thankful for their help, then we for sure would have just had a very, very, very simple wedding with a few amount of people and not how it was. But I'm so thankful for my parents. Um, we had a set budget for the wedding and I made sure we stayed at that budget. Like I was, I did not want to go past that budget, especially for my parents' sake. So have y'all had your first big fight or are y'all still, I love the y'alls, or are y'all still on honeymoon phase? We had our first big fight when we were dating and it was about finances. We have fought a lot and a lot in a normal couple way. Um, being in a relationship means you're not always going to see eye to eye. He's a man. I'm a woman. He has different ideas of different things than I ha do. Um, we both have different personalities. Like, it's just he's has a different culture than I do. Different parents who raised him. So, of course, that's going to bring about fights and it's going to bring about arguing. And if you watch any of my videos, you know I've talked about that before. But... We have had major fights and we've had to work through them. I will say this though. There are some things that are worth fighting for. There are some things that are worth not fighting in like fighting in a good way. Like really working out a disagreement that actually matters. And then there's petty things. There's things like, why did you leave this out? And da 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 da. And I can't believe you leaving this out again. Like there's things that you can just let go. Mimi! I don't think I'm going to cut anything out of this video. Okay. Uh... Sweetheart. Oh my gosh, she's nuts right now. How do you trust yourself to love someone for a lifetime? Heavy, I know, LOL. Great question. I actually think this is one of the best questions I've ever gotten. How do you trust yourself to love someone for a lifetime? 
I can completely relate to you. I asked myself the same thing. I honestly would say I don't trust myself. I know that I am prone to wander. I know that in myself, I am held captive by sin. Sin is over all of us, which makes us selfish, which makes us want to do our own thing, which makes us walk in the path of death, just to be honest. So I don't necessarily trust myself, but I trust my God who lives within me, who sent his Holy Spirit to live and dwell within me. I trust God. I trust that he brought me and Johnny together and he did that for a reason. He called me and Johnny to be married together and to do ministry together and to live life together. And so I trust that God will be faithful. Of course, I pray all the time, Lord, be in our marriage. Help Johnny be faithful. Help me be faithful. Help us to love. Help us to set ourselves aside. I don't trust myself, Lord. I trust you. So come dwell within me, live within me, help me walk on your path. Keep me in your word that I may walk a straight path. Psalm 119, read it. Okay, I think that's a great way to answer that question. Because I know I think we all know we are prone to wander. We worry, should I get married and be committed to one person for the rest of my life? That's scary. It absolutely is. But if God is calling you to that, you can trust him. And you can trust that he will carry you through the hard seasons, the easy seasons. He'll be there for everything. Next question. Was your wedding bilingual? It was. And it was so, so beautiful. Johnny is from Chile, South America. So we had a bilingual wedding. His dad did the service and his dad speaks primarily Spanish. So how has being married changed the way you view your singleness? Also a phenomenal question. How has being married changed the way you view your singleness? So I think I look back to my singleness and I wish I would have enjoyed it more because it's a time to not have to worry about somebody else as that sounds bad, but it's true. You're single, you're living for yourself. You're making your own decisions. You can do as much ministry as you want. You can run your own business. You can start your own this. You can do that. You can, you can do so many things when you're single. You can get an education. You can make strong, deep friendships. You can serve. You can, you can do so much. You can grow on the gifts and the talents God gave you. You can sing, you can paint, you can learn an instrument. Of course, don't get me wrong. You can do all those things when you're married and have a family. But it's easier and you have more time when you're single, usually. I'm not saying in every case, but usually. So I wish I would have enjoyed my singleness more and stopped longing and longing and longing and longing and longing for re relationship. I feel like that I was so captivated on wanting a relationship for so long that I didn't live in the season that God had for me then. As an introvert who really loves her space and alone time, does this change when you get married? I'm the same way, girl. I'm an introvert. I love my space. I love my quiet time. I go under the blanket sometimes just to get away from the world and like be in a little cozy ball. I made this clear to Johnny. Johnny's an extrovert. He loves people. He loves going out. He gets energized from people. So at the very beginning of our relationship, I made it clear. I said, hey, we're really different in this area. And especially when I knew we were getting married, I told him, hey, guess what? I need my alone time when we get married. I love to just sometimes be by myself. I love to read by myself. I love to paint. And honestly, as since I've been married, there's so many opportunities. He works all day. I get to be home by myself all day. Um, he has a lot of things he does for himself as well. So... I just feel like, hi, beautiful, come say hi, hi. I just feel like there's so many opportunities to be by myself and then there's so many opportunities for us to be together and then doing ministry together. So it's a good balance. So I would say if you're an introvert, make it clear that, that you need alone time to thrive. <clears throat> what was the most challenging thing to adjust to when living together? Johnny is super, super, super clean. He's super neat. He's super organized. I must say, that's an amazing quality to have because I do not have that. I am more messy. I leave junk around the house. I leave things here. I leave things there. That has been the hardest adjustment. And 
learning how to live with each other when we both live very differently in that area. Um, still trying to figure that out. What advice would you give to someone who is single, who hasn't dated, that wants to date? When you're ready, when you feel like you're old enough, I would say go on a few dates. Put yourself out there. They don't have to end in marriage. Dating one person doesn't have to end in marriage. If you realize they're not the one for you, they're not the one for you. But be bold. Be friends with guys. Go on a few dates. Why not, right? That's my advice. But don't put so much pressure on one guy to be the one. Just let go and relax and go on a date. It doesn't have to be anything crazy. I don't know. That's my advice. I don't know. There's no bi dating in the Bible, so I don't know if that's a biblical answer. That's just coming from my heart, so take it as you will. What do you love most about being married and what has been the greatest adjustment? What do I love most? I love laughing with Johnny. I know that sounds so funny, but in the moments that we just laugh together and have fun, I'm like, thank you, God, for this amazing man who makes me laugh and lightens the mood and just has so much fun. Also, can we take a moment? This is just crazy. Oh, come here. Okay, I'm just so happy that I'm married to a man who has so much joy in his heart, who is constantly happy, who makes me laugh. Like his mental health and his emotional health is so stable that it helps me because I'm like a roller coaster. And so sometimes I'm like, just thank you, Lord, for this amazing man. The greatest adjustment being away from my family. That has been the hardest, hardest, hardest thing for me. Many days where I cry, many moments where my heart is just broken because I miss my family so much. They live three and a half hours away. So not bad, but it is a very, very different thing to not be living in my parents' house anymore, to not see my mom and my sister, my dad and my brother every day. So last, oh, uh, two last. Where did you get your dress? You look so pretty. I got it from a small boutique in Kenosha, Wisconsin. Wait, no, not Kenosha. Is it Kenosha? Kenosha, Kenosha, Kenosha. I can't remember the town. Anyways, a small boutique in Wisconsin. I'll have the dress linked into the description. And I actually talk a lot about my dress in a video I just posted on my art channel. So I'll have that video linked in the description. The design on my dress, I actually create created art pieces off of it and my invitation and things at my wedding. So if you wanna know more about my dress, watch that video, I'll have it linked in the description. My dream dress. Okay, and lastly, will you be coming out with a wedding video? We will, we're still waiting for it to get done. Obviously, we're not creating it. Somebody else filmed it, somebody else is editing it, and we will have it on Coffee and Bible Time literally as soon as possible. Like, as soon as they give it to us, we're posting it. So anyways, I think that's it for today. Mimi wants to say goodbye and that he loves you so much. He's currently giving my hands a bath. I love you guys. Thank you so much for watching. Super chill video. I know I look crazy. I haven't done anything since I got out of bed, but it's Vlogmas. You guys just want to see my real life anyway, so here you go. I love you, friend. I will see you soon in the next video. Bye.